smash that like button right off the bat. Not because you necessarily like what's happening out here in Mexico, but you like the fact I'm bringing this information to you that no one else is. As well as leave a comment down below, even with just the letter A, num number one. That's Those two things, the comment and the like button, would help this get recommended in the world to see it. And that's how we resolve this conflict. First step, bringing attention to it. My Patreon is also down below in the description. You can see things like me picking a bullet fragment, doing walkthroughs in war-torn neighborhoods, other videos I can't put up on YouTube. Subscribe as well. Click on that notification bell. Have a good one and enjoy the upcoming video and information. Adios, amigos. So after talking about the house and how luxurious it was, we're going to get into a little bit of their lifestyle and when I say they I'm talking about the Ariano Felix you know they used to throw very lavish parties and I'll see if I can include a clip of one of their parties probably before this so you guys can kind of get a feel for it uh, of course the clothing the music and everything is different this is a different epic we're talking about for those of you who don't know about the Ariana Felix uh, they've all been locked up a very long time and you know they had their heyday if you want to call it that through several decades, they maintain power, but they're all locked up now and have been for a long time. So let's keep that in mind, right? And let's also keep in mind, uh, the doctor was just released from prison in the United States to be deported to Mexico and rearrested and put back into prison, just like what happened basically with Wero Palma, the same, same idea, right? So nothing new. Now, the Ariana Felix clan, you know, used to be growing in the 80s at their strong point and remember their uncle of the Ariana Felix most people forget about this or don't know was Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo right the one of the original founders of the Guadalajara cartel and the first truly Mexican cartel so with having someone that powerful in their in their corner you know that makes a lot of difference now on top of that, the fact they held the plaza in Tijuana being one of the most valuable plazas because it's the door to California, the population density, the price of the product they can sell there makes it easy to get rich. So, you know, their organization's heyday, like I was saying, had lots of parties and lots of excesses as well as excesses and violence. Um, they came from Guadalajara where they're actually working with their tío and you know at their parties and their events they'd have cocaine and drugs openly for anyone to grab you know on platters stuff like that when i say excesses and you could walk up and grab a hand as long as you weren't filling your pockets or trying to be greedy and steal if it was for your use anyone could use to and party as much as they wanted now these parties were known for being very dangerous uh several people died at these parties and that was a normal staple is violence. You got to remember that. A lot of these parties were held at a tower, like an apartment tower, luxuries, luxury apartments known in La Zona Rio. Um, it ended up being abandoned, you know, because of the problems caused by, you know, the younger narcos and stuff like that in this area. But the Ariana Felix in that time were in charge of Ramon Ariano, who was by far anybody who was alive in that day and in Tijuana can speak on how violent Ramon was and the type of violence he employed. Um, you know, these are the people who killed, had one of Palma's wife seduced, had her head chopped off, and then had their sons thrown off the highest waterfall in Venezuela, and they sent Wero Palma the video of her getting her head chopped off and her kids being thrown off the waterfall. These are things that Mexico had never heard of. You remember when I was talking about the old school? This was the old school. But these people were evil, even in the old school. These, these guys, the Ariana Felix, were killing women and children by mass and openly back in the 80s. So, you know, they almost have some of the trademarks of the Zetas as far as what they were willing to do and how they went about doing it. Um, it was said if you just smiled and he felt bad, he'd kill you just because you looked like you were happy and he wasn't. That was actually a quote from one of his close sicarios. That's not just some thing I was saying. Some of the people who were actually close to him and around him said that. Now, he died, Ramon, in 2002. 
under a hail of bullets of, you know, police. And I talked that he went to kill Mayo in Mazatlan in El Carnaval and ended up killing a comandante of the police who walked up on him, but the comandante killed him. Uh, the men that were with him were also arrested. Some of them were killed. I think only one survived. But, you know, that's the way he went out. He wanted to kill him personally. And he was very discreet that day, if you want to be honest. His Volkswagen, you know, just a normal car. He had no jewelry, no flashy clothes. He really was trying to stay under the radar and pull up on Mayo and kill him personally. Right? So this guy definitely had a big pair on him. He didn't send people to do it. He went. He sent people, but he was with them, if that makes sense. He was... They were just accompanying him. It's not like he sent them and he stayed at home to watch the TV. So, after a month after Ramon died, Benjamin Ariano was arrested in the residential zone in Puebla. Now, you can imagine them losing one cartel boss and then the next one coming up, getting arrested within a month, definitely caused lots of problems in the organization of the, the structure. So, after that happened, their actual organization kind of divided up. Um, Francisco Javier Ariano Felix, also known as El Tegrillo, took control of a good part of it. And the actual financial part of it was taken care of by the sister, Enedina Ariano Felix. So El Tigrillo took care of what would be the sales and the violence and, you know, making people pay. And she took charge of the financial aspects. Now, right now, Francisco Rafael, the oldest, uh, was executed by the anthrax at a party. I have a video of his execution, actually, on my page. If you want to walk it, watch it, you can see Chino or another member of the Antarctic, some dispute whether it was Chino or another person, I'm not going to say their name, but definitely one of the two, and it definitely was the Antrax, and I definitely have the video up, if you want to check that out, um, I might leave it on the end screen for you guys, and that's the famous clown, you know, where they dress up as a clown, walk up and murdered him right in front of all his people, and then got away, uh, one of his sons almost caught up with Chino, but he shot at his feet, at the his son's feet, when I say son, these are grown men, but he shot at his feet because he didn't want to kill him. And they escaped. So, crazy, right? Um, you know, the, the amount of drugs they supplied to California is probably by far the most out of any single group or family clan or anything like that. Um, you know, Sinaloa started to compete with them directly in California, but during the 80s and those epics they had no competition they were the connect you know um right now they've been divided uh they thought mencho wanted to be their friend i guess which of course doesn't make sense and he just came in took their connects and then divided their cartel into the original area on felix and the cartel of tijuana new generation kind of like Jalisco new generation took most of their manpower what was left of their leadership, which would have been a flaquito, you know, he went with his business partner, the two heads of the plaza, to Culecan, and switched to the Sinaloa cartel, and then killed his partner that was with him. So he's the only one who ended up at the plaza, but working for the Chapitos. So they've taken lots of hits, and that's been uh, very, con you know, laid back. Um, some would say they're gone, you know, because they've been hit so hard. Now, Eduardo, like I said, was arrested in 2008 in Tijuana. He actually had an AK-47 on him. And there was a $5 million award on him at that time. And he was actually sentenced to 15 years, to be exact. Um, and he did cooperate. And that's why he only got two of the seven charges, I guess. Now, after finishing his sentence... He was at the Allentown, Pennsylvania, was his last prison to be at, where he finished his sentence at. After that, he was turned over to migration authorities and was turned over here to Mexico. So, what an end, right? What an end to a crazy life and a crazy story. I'm sure they're going to make a movie on it someday, and they're probably already in the process of doing so, right? 
Please smash on that like button. Leave a comment down below. I wish each and every one of you the best. Ya te la sabes. Ay, chingazo, pariente. Sigue leyendo.